the fastest way to live off dividends is by not investing in dividend stocks. That is a fact. You won't hear from a lot of dividend investors, including myself. I love dividend stocks. I invest in dividend stocks. But if you are trying to build to a point where you can live off your dividends, you should not be investing in dividend stocks. I know it doesn't seem to make sense, but I'm gonna explain why so many investors fail in that goal of living off their dividends, the two traps that keep them from getting there, and then a strategy you can use for the absolute fastest way to get that cash flow you can live on. I'll then reveal why I still invest in dividend stocks. If you're new to the Bowtie Nation here on Let's Talk Money, thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. Don't forget to join the community by tapping that subscribe button. I wanna jump right in here, and part of the problem here is that dividend investors don't see the real traps in their dividend stocks. I hear all the time that when I'm talking about a dividend pairs like Coca-Cola with its 3% dividend that the amount you need to invest is beyond ridiculous. At that 3% yield, or $1.84 per share annual dividend, you would need to invest almost $1.2 million just to make $3,000 a month in dividends. So the common answer to this is, well, it's something you have to build up to over decades of investing. But even at that, you'd have to invest $1,000 a month for 26 years at Coke's average annual return of a 9.4% just to build that million dollar portfolio that's 26 years. So it's understandable when investors get dollar signs in their eyes, seeing a dividend stock like the NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF, that QYLD, with its 11.5% dividend yield. A payout almost four times that of Coke means you only need to invest a little over $313,000 to make that same $3,000 a month dividend. The problem is not only has the stock price plunged 30% over the last five years, but the dividend amount has been cut from 23 cents a share to just 18 cents each, meaning you have lost money and would no longer be collecting that much income. So this is the problem as dividend investors see it, but it hides the real problems investing in dividend stocks to live off that income. Now, the first real problem here with investing in dividend stocks to build that portfolio is these stocks just don't grow your portfolio fast enough. Even with reinvesting those dividends, it takes decades to build a portfolio large enough to live off your dividends. We'll use everyone's favorite monthly dividend stock, Realty Income, ticker O, here as an example. If we invest $1,000 a month, reinvest the 5% dividend, which grows at a 3.5% rate a year, and assume a 15% tax rate on dividends, and the stock price grows at the stock's average 10-year 3.9% growth rate. It will still take us more than 22 years to build that $700,000 portfolio you need to make $3,000 a month in your dividends. Folks, the fact is every company has a choice. It can reinvest its profits into growing the company and the share price, or it can pay out those profits as dividends. With dividend paying stocks, that instant cash flow feels great, but you're sacrificing growth. These companies, especially the ones with those higher dividend yields, will not grow your portfolio fast enough to live off those dividends anytime soon. Now, the second and bigger problem with dividend stocks is you lose so much to taxes that it eats away at your wealth. Taxes are the silent killer for dividend investors. Now, taxes on most dividend stocks are bad enough. If a stock pays a qualified dividend and you hold it for more than 60 days, then the amount you collect is taxed at a capital gains rate of 0, 15, or 20%, depending on your income. Remember, that 26 years building a portfolio to live off dividends from Coca-Cola, paying a 15% tax rate on those dividends each year means over those 26 years, you would have paid almost $50,000 in taxes. That's $50,000 gone that could have been working for you. Because don't forget folks, you pay taxes each year on the dividends you collect, whether you take that money or reinvest. If a stock pays a dividend, come tax time, you're gonna lose some of that to taxes. There is no avoiding it. Even worse though, many of those high yield dividend funds like the QYLD do not qualify for those capital gains treatment. Instead, you're gonna pay income tax rates on the dividends you collect, tax rates that can be as high as 37% for some investors. And that just means it's gonna take even longer than you think to live off your dividends in these high yield stocks like QYLD. Every year, the money you lose out on taxes could have been working for you. So all of this, uh, this is why the fastest way to live off your dividends is by investing in growth stocks, building your portfolio faster with the stocks that grow the share price, then using that later to invest in dividend stocks when the payout gives you the income you need. I'll show you exactly how to do that, which stocks to watch and how much you'll need to live off your dividends next. But first, I wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. 
each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. I'll reveal what to look for in growth stocks next, but if there was any doubt, this table compares the five year annualized returns with popular growth stocks on the left against dividend stocks on the right. And you can see it's not even close. Those of you in the nation will recognize the Schwab Dividend Income ETF, that SCHD, AbbVie, and JP Morgan Income ETF, the JEPI. These are some of my favorite dividend investors and the returns with dividends don't even come close to matching stocks like DraftKings, Nvidia, even the QQQ, the 100 largest companies in the NASDAQ index, most of them those tech growth stocks, beating dividend stocks with a 15% annualized return. Nation, the simple fact is, with that dividend payout, there is just no way dividend stocks are gonna beat that portfolio building return you're gonna get from growth. Let's say you need $640,000 portfolio to make $3,000 a month. That's from the iShares High Yield Bond ETF, ticker HYG, at its 5.6% yield. Getting there is a heck of a lot faster with these growth stocks. In fact, investing just $500 a month on the annual returns on any of these five growth stocks have booked over the last five years gets you to that goal fast. You would have gotten there in less than nine years in shares of Tesla, 10 years with Nvidia, even in the index fund, the QQQ, you would have gotten there in 21 years, investing half the amount we had to invest in realty income to get to that same point. So I wanna show you how to find these kinds of wealth building growth stocks. I'll walk you through a stock screener next, but the important point here is you're looking for four factors to narrow your list. First, you're looking for companies growing their revenue and their earnings. This is the very definition of a growth stock, that double digit growth in sales and earnings per share that is more than just the numbers seem. A company growing its sales faster than its competitors means it's not only growing with the industry, but also taking more market share. For some reason, whether it's a better or innovative product, maybe better delivery or service, the company is able to produce that faster sales growth versus its competition. And that is doubly true for earnings growth. As an investor, you have an ownership right to those future earnings, so growth here is what you wanna see. But if that earnings growth is higher than sales growth, it's also an indication that the company is getting more efficient, more profitable at turning that revenue into income. Anytime you can find that, a company with strong sales growth but also growing earnings faster that is an unstoppable combination. Next here is an improving operating margin. And this is kind of what we talked about with that faster earnings growth, but just another measurable way to find it. The operating margin is the operating income divided by revenue for the period. It's how efficiently the company is turning those sales into operating profits. So the op margin, that's getting higher over time. Not only is the company growing its sales faster, but also getting better at turning those into profits for investors. Now finally, you're gonna bring all this together and ask, what is the company's competitive advantage over its peers? This is a big picture factor that makes all the others possible. Uh, does the company produce a better product? Does it, does it have a new way of producing or delivering that product? Does it have a stronger brand or a customer service? What is it doing that is enabling that faster sales growth, the earnings growth, and the operating efficiency? And folks, I know this is a lot more work than just clicking through YouTube and getting five stock ideas, but this is the kind of work that goes into real investing. This is the kind of research that will make you a better investor, make it so you're not dependent on YouTube to pick your stocks, and honestly, make you a hell of a lot more money. I'll walk you through the free stock screener here on Yahoo Finance, but you can use this process on any investing app. We're here in the screener and click on add another filter to see a list of filters. Now I've added the one year percentage change in earnings per share, that's EPS, and the filter for quarterly revenue growth to find those stocks growing their sales and their earnings. Yahoo doesn't let you filter for operating margin, so we're gonna have to look at each stock later to find those profitable companies. And here, I'll start by filtering for the companies with at least 25% growth in earnings and 25% or more in revenue growth. Now that's still gonna leave us with a quite a list, so I'll add a valuation filter here like price to sales ratio as well. Looking for those growth stocks that aren't too expensive just yet. You'll see that narrows our list quite a bit, but you might wanna start with a bigger list and then narrow it down to looking at each company to find those true growth stocks. And you're gonna invest in these growth stocks for the long term. We're talking more than five or 10 years to really give them time to grow your portfolio. And these aren't the kind of stocks you trade in and out of. Give them time to prove their growth and they will make you a lot of money. Now, once you've used those growth stocks to build a portfolio, you'll then start to shift that money into dividend paying stocks to live off your dividends, but 
there are a few things you need to understand here. First is just understanding how much you need to live off your dividends, and this is the easy part. If you wanna find how much you need to invest, take the income you need divided by the dividend yield on a stock. For example, if we want that $3,000 a month or $36,000 a year income, and let's say we've invested in the iShares High Yield Bond ETF, that ticker HYG, and it's 5.6% dividend, then $36,000 divided by 0.056 equals 642,857. That's what we need to invest to have that much invested to collect $3,000 a month in dividends from the HYG. Of course, you don't want all of your money in just one dividend stock. So you'll wanna do this with each stock, then add up the dividends to, to make sure you're getting to that monthly income that you need. For some ideas on great dividend stocks, I'm gonna link here to the seven highest paying dividend stocks, yielding as much as 14% that'll help pay your bills. Also though, remember there will be capital gains tax when you sell those growth stocks. You'll pay that zero, 15, or 20% tax on any profits you've made since you bought them. So you're gonna need a little bit more in your portfolio so you have enough left over to live off those dividends. Here are the income limits for tax rates. So if your taxable income is less than $41,000 or, or $83,000 married, then you don't have to pay capital gains tax at all. If you make over that, say you report $115,000 in taxable income with your spouse, then you'll have to pay that 15% taxes on any profits you've made. For example, looking back on the time it took to build a portfolio in the semiconductor ETF, if we invested $1,000 a month and needed $640,000 portfolio to earn that $3,000 a month, if we invested later in the high yield bond fund, we actually need to build our portfolio for one more year to have enough left over after those taxes. You would have invested $156,000 in those 13 years and made $597,000 in profits. If those profits are taxed at that 15% capital gains rate, you'll have about 508,000 in after-tax profits plus the 156,000 you invested for that 664,000 you can now use to live off your dividends. Now I'm gonna reveal why I still invest in dividend stocks even after knowing all this next. But finally here, you're gonna to wanna to gradually shift your money into dividends instead of waiting until you reach that amount you need. This means maybe two or three years from that when you want to start living off your dividends, start selling some of your growth stocks and then buying your dividend stocks. I like this strategy because those dividend stocks are usually much less risky than your growth stocks. You can see in this chart, while the semiconductor fund has easily beaten the Schwab Dividend Equity ETF on returns, it's also been a roller coaster ride of risk and stress over the five years. You do not want that stress causing you to panic out of your investments as you get closer to needing that money. So I like to gradually shift it into those safer stocks. You might get a lower return and have to pay those dividend taxes each year, but you're gonna know the money is gonna be there when you need it. Now you've got that process for living off your dividends and it truly is the fastest way possible, but now I'm gonna throw a wrench in the whole plan and, and explain why I still even though I'm reinvesting and not living off my dividends yet, why I still invest in dividend stocks. Because there are some reasons you might reconsider buying dividend stocks, why I still talk about dividend stocks, even though growth stocks are the way to go to building a portfolio. And the first is that constant motivation and the cash return. Folks, seeing a dividend check hit your account each month or even every week, there is nothing like it and can be the motivation to keep you investing even when your budget gets tight. For so many investors, that is the most important factor in investing, each month putting a little bit more in your portfolio to help it grow. That gets harder when stock prices fall and you start to question whether it's worth it at all, but those dividends give you a reason every single month and just keep you investing. And like we talked about in that strategy, dividend stocks are just a less risky investment in a stock crash, and I'm a less risky kind of guy. I'm fine giving up a little bit of return and growth if I don't have to watch my portfolio plunge in a crash. I still have my money in growth stocks to build that portfolio, but my dividend stocks help to smooth out the ride until I get there. Get your weekly market update free with the link below or click on the video to the right for the seven highest paying dividend stocks in the market. Seven stocks to help you pay your bills faster. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.